And uh, we were, you know, we've been doing short films for years. And John called me one day and said, "You should make a film in my church. It's so scary." And he sent me a bunch of pictures. I was like, "What? You live in this church?" And so we did. I already had this idea of YouTubers that were making a living on you know, these prank scares, and that they were going to start to go down this rabbit hole of nightmares. And then John called us. Okay. I just that, that was the spark. That was the inspiration that brought it all together. But he had a he had a very specific set of terms. Oh, yeah. He had to be in the movie. One hundred percent. He had to star in the movie. And a boy. We're so grateful for that. Yeah. Yeah. He killed it. He killed it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this experience. Yeah. Oh, the movie. Yeah. The um. <laughs> thing was is that I worked with Justo uh, about ten years ago in a cop show, and I fucking love the guy. And he's really so inspired, and he really works super hard to get stuff out of people. And a good director does that. They know what they have to work with and how to use it. And Justin and Rob, honestly, it's one of those things where he saw the situation of this church and said, I'm just going to write a script around it. I'll get back to you. But two and a half weeks later, I'm fishing. <laughs> phone rings. He's like, I got a script. You ready? Oh, shit. Okay. Because if I didn't like it, I'd have to say no. Because it's everything. You know, trampled my house, right? <laughs> he tells me the script, and I just almost died. Like, Can you act? Yo, yeah, that's the other thing. Uh, I don't know, I'll do it, man. I just wanted to not ruin the movie. So, um, but he took that and he took all these people, everybody here, he knew, yeah. fucking, all these, all these people, just knew what to do, and he brought all of them on board, and they all came into my house with the utmost respect. Nothing was broken, nothing was actually trampled, and it was fucking beautiful and I love you and I love you Rob and Dale for producing this there's my baby right there and Brooklyn let's hear from you two fantastic ladies here one more one more little shout out uh, my wife Bridget had to deal with that whole thing <laughs> Let's hear from uh, Ron and Tim, the two fantastic ladies. Give it up for them. It was incredible. I, to jump in, it was incredible. And uh, you'd never fucking know that John had never acted before because he was brilliant. I did, he was so fucking funny and, and fantastic. <laughs> And uh, this crew, like you said, that, that uh, Justin and Rob brought together with Dale was absolutely insane. Vivian, the music was so yeah, brilliant, okay. dude. Brilliant. Okay, okay. And, uh, okay, that's okay. Right, 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 right. But like, it was good, but it was also, I mean, it was dirty. That was like 12 days of long hours. I appreciate the love and that's very nice. Like everybody did a really good job. But that was long ass days. And we were a little bit grumpy. And you know, there was a bit of drama. But like overall, really good. And like amazing end product. But like it's hard to shoot a movie in 10 days. Well, you guys are boring, right? Heck yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's like, I think that's what makes it even more exciting is, and more of a family project is that you can like work through anything. You know, that's kind of like an over, I don't know, that's an exciting thing to achieve altogether. Is that like all those pressures, people are still on board. It's pretty amazing. Well said. We've got some questions from the audience. Anybody want to shout something out uh, over there? Yeah, yeah I, I'm just curious. Uh, as far as the supernatural element that was in the movie, did you leave it open-ended so you could meet, meet it again? or? So for the supernatural elements, do we leave it open ended so we can, we can yeah, so we can see it again? Um, the supernatural elements, it's uh, not not really. I never thought about I never thought about revisiting it after this. It's 
the there's a there's a there's one ghost in this story, and that that ghost is, was the guy in the beginning who's running and gets cut down. And that ghost realizes there's a clairvoyant in the house and sees an opportunity to, to communicate with her and steal the moment. The drugs unlock something inside of her that allows her. And, and this and this one ghost is is trying to save his boyfriend, trying to lure these people down in the basement to reveal the truth that they're in. And and it, it's uh, yeah, that, I never I never imagined being open ended. It was just the ghost has one particular uh, motive. That's to just save his boyfriend by using the clairvoyance in the house. I hope that answers the question. Now he gets it. So the question is, how did you come up with the mask for the mayor? Alexander Peden was a preacher from the 1560s. Justice says, this is fucking scary. What about something like this? And he, he was a preacher and he was running from the government, uh, <laughs> preaching against the government. And so he had to find all these places and they found this mask like uh, 200 years later. And that was the inspiration behind this. And it took me a month to build it. <laughs> Normally, I sculpt something and mold it and then run it in silicone, but this is a fabrication, one of a kind type thing. And I was so scared to show Justo because I was proud of it. But then after a while, me and Bridget were like, is it even scary anymore? <laughs> you, you fucking stare at it over and over and over again. And I, had, I was held on the button for so long. Decent. <laughs> and then wait, and then you see that little text bar come up. I'm like, he's like fucking amazing. I'm like, oh, okay, we can move forward. And then I went and bought the costume. Now he lives forever in his church on a mannequin. That's right. To stare at him every day when he wakes up. The, yeah. the initial inspiration for the for the mask for me was I, I wanted something that was scary that looked a bit like Jesus. And that's true. And if you just Google search like scary Jesus, it's pretty much that. This mask. Alexander yeah. Peden mask pops up, and you can Google it. it we stay very close to that reference. Absolutely. And it's pretty cheap. It's not a scary. Some, some more questions from the floor. Anybody want to throw one out? Uh, otherwise, I've got a couple. Oh, yeah. Do you want to go? For, yeah. Music is absolutely awesome. And uh, can you tell us a little bit more about the process and how long it takes to actually? Yeah, Vivian here lives in LA and he created this music with a 20 piece orchestra. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you, thank you very much. Um, so, uh, basically, uh, uh, Dave Andrews, producer, and the two directors were uh, extremely supportive. Uh, they had saved a big part of the budget um, to be able to work with uh, real musicians. So. We had um, three sessions with 20 musicians uh, in Hollywood. And uh, also they were extremely close to the process, which means that um, at some point, uh, Justin was even editing into my own office when I was composing. And then we were interacting when he had finished the scene, I would put some uh, things. Um, I was thinking, because it's, it's um, not so easy to, to find people so supportive into the musical process nowadays, especially in uh, independent features. Um, so all the time I was thinking that stuff has to be my, my best stuff uh, ever, or I'm just uh, just have to turn down the job. And uh, was always focused in, in thinking I have to please these people as much as I can. <laughs> a big motivation. And um, so the other point is uh, Justin seems to be a very nice guy. He's a very nice guy, uh, but he has a darkness uh, <laughs> into his mind, which is uh, uh, fascinating. Which uh, to which he gave like full room, you know, full space in that movie, um, and uh, I had to go back to my own darkness and to try to understand how to express the, that thing. And um, often I tried also some combinations between uh, darkness and light, which means that even when I go very deep into into a darkness, into my music, I always try to find some things which are slightly lightful and. The contradiction and the opposition sometimes create something a bit complex, which I think um, reflects the complexity of life. I think most people are not just one way or another, and uh, we never have completely bad or completely good guys. And so I think in, in music for films as well, it's interesting to work in that kind of contrast and opposition.
tell us about the casting process? Yeah, um, we have a very unique way of working. We're all friends and family. We've all worked in television over the years. In the last 15 years, we've all worked together in different ways and different projects. And this film, I mean, a big, a big part of it was John just coming to the table with this, with this uh, church and, and saying, I have to be in it. Right? Well, there you go, there's, there's John. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then Alana, I mean, Alana and I are married. We've been together for 19 years. And we, we did laugh together and cookie and all these films we screen here. And, Atlanta's not, it's, it's a funny process because we don't just cast actors, we really um, create movies with partners. Um, that's how we've been doing it over the years. Um, and Sergio came on board to help find Chris. Yeah, Sergio. And we needed, to, we, needed, like, we, needed, we needed to find the Chris character and we went through a casting process to find Chris. And we looked at many different tapes and we had made our decision and then two days after we made our decision, he's like, oh, there's one more tape. And then Tim, with his long hair and his perfect audition, came in and we're like, what? Done. Yeah. So, <laughs> it's, it's this guy. It's gotta be this guy. And then, and then so that's how the cast came together. Oh, and Jarrett, the guy at the beginning who's running naked, gets yeah. his arm cut off. He plays the creature. He's, he plays the, the ghost as well. He also is a real partner in, in these films. He played Cookie, he played Latched, he plays all these creatures. He's also like an art director. The door that Tim cuts down with the axe, Jarrett built those doors. Mm -hmm. um, he built he built prosthetics and, and all kinds of stuff for he himself. He helped schedule, he helped yeah. produce, he was like part of it the whole way. Yeah, so yeah, so Jared also, and so Alana is a professional dancer at the Toronto Dance Theater. She's Ooh. been dancing professionally for 15 years with this company, and Jared is also a dancer, and they've been performing together, so I like to use dancers in, in each film because of the physicality and because of their bravery. I mean, Alana and Jared and the, these actors who, are, who come from a dance background are really, are really like willing to do anything. <laughs> in the name of art, I mean, it's it's not it's not traditional casting, except for Tim. I mean, you came through the process traditionally, but the rest of uh... I was an erotic dancer for like three years. Yeah, so that's how the casting <laughs> casting went down. We've actually maybe got time to just maybe one more from the floor. Anybody want to throw one out? Okay, over there. Yeah, I really enjoy the cinematography, and I was just wondering uh, how much of the shots are you planning storyboarding on this movie before you went up to the church, and how much are you on the fly, like coming up with angles? And yeah, the question is. Sitting right there. There's our DP. What? It's too crazy. It's too crazy. Too crazy. It's too crazy. Now you come up. Oh, 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 storyboarded but um, you know everything kind of changes on the day we try to keep as close as possible to, to everything we plan Justin creates these amazing like animatic storyboards that are fully like animated and you can see exactly what lens you uh, you want to you want to use and exactly what the shots gonna look like but Stu brought his creative genius as he always does to the to the field and it's very much a collaboration on set and we wouldn't have been able to do it without him and would have looked as amazing yeah, everything was through. Yeah, certain scenes are heavily storyboarded, and then other scenes we, we, we you can't storyboard them. Yeah. It's just it's trying to create an environment for the actors, and then it's running gun. Yeah. And um, the student did a great job using vintage lenses with like glass from the 40s. Do you want to speak about your lenses? <laughs> <laughs> no, but how is the photography? I mean, yeah. uh, <laughs> the best moment for us right now. It goes to the 14 mil. Yeah. Um, no, we used. Um, Oh, God. Uh, we use lenses uh, by a guy named uh, Richard Gale from the UK. Uh, they're Helios 44s. <laughs> and they're on house. And they used uh, like modern optics to widen and. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, before we go, uh, uh, where, what's next for this movie and where can fans uh, you know, catch up with it? Like, what's your plan for release? Yeah, it's a good question. So we just, this is hot the press. We've only, we just world premiered a couple, a few, like a month ago. We were in the festival circuit. There's a few, we've been looking at a couple of distribution offers. Right now, we're still looking for a distribution. So, so right now, it's only in the festival circuit and uh, we're, we're looking getting at the word out important. Yeah, it's getting the word out is important. Yeah, and all good reviews help and yeah. So it's, we'll, we'll, we'll see. We're, we're, there's a couple of offers on the table we're considering.
Can I say one more thing really quick before we go? Jared, Jared, who, again, played the naked guy, he's the only person who couldn't be here, and he's made all of our films with us, and he's in Mexico on this dance tour. I, I, I want, we really miss him here. I want to I wanna film everyone saying, we miss you, Jared, on the count of three. If you guys can do that, that would mean a lot to Jared. And everyone here, if we can do this, here we go. I'm going to say one, two, three, we miss you, Jared. Okay, here we go. One, two, three. We miss you, Jared! Thank you very much.